and get started tonight. So glad that you're here. Hallelujah. We've got rain and another part of the world has got snow and cold. And so we're we are thankful to the Lord for his goodness uh, in our lives and upon us tonight. Uh, Lord, we, we are so grateful to you tonight. We're thankful for your many blessings. Thank you for your love and your encouragement. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for ministering life to us here tonight and those who are listening uh, via the Internet. Lord, we are so grateful for your goodness, your mercy, Lord. Thank you for the entrance of your word brings light. It gives understanding even unto the simple. And David said, your word have I hid in my heart that I would not sin against you. And so, Lord, we pray that you would speak to our hearts tonight. You will encourage our hearts tonight. And wherever we find ourselves, whatever we are battling or dealing with, or uh, Lord God may seem overwhelming of time, at times within our lives. Lord, thank you for your courage and uh, your courage within our hearts and our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you infuse us with strength and you cause us to to believe, Lord God, that though there are giants that we might be facing, that, God, you have given us the victory, and yes. that, Lord, you. through you we triumph always in Christ Jesus. And so, Lord, we just honor you. We just thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory, and we give you all the honor. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God, Sister Marilyn. I give blessings on you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I want to talk about. I want to talk about just for a, a little while. We've been teaching a lot about faith, and uh, we we started with why we pray, and then we we went from why we pray to the kingdom of God, and, and we talked about that. Then we talked about the the master key to the kingdom, which is faith. Amen. And then we dovetail off of that and we talked about the power of sowing seed. And so the Lord wanted me to, uh, I introduced this on Sunday, the Lord wanted me to, to talk about this when it, when it comes to faith because sometimes um, uh, people are just looking for that which is automatic, that which comes instantly. And many times uh, our struggles and, and we lose the battle many times because of the time that's in between uh, what I'm praying for and when the manifestation comes. And so I want you to go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I mean chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Hallelujah. Because in all of our lives, uh, sometimes you pray for certain things and and uh, though you know God is with you, with it, 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 you feel like you need it right away. And, and sometimes we find that God doesn't come when we think he ought to. God doesn't answer when we think he should. Uh, God, God doesn't do certain things when we think he ought to do it. Uh, you may be someone who have prayed for a child, or you know of someone that's prayed for a child, and they felt like, I was believing God. And the child passed, the child died, or the husband died, or the wife died, or something difficult or tra tragic happened in our life. And sometimes Christians can't get their minds around that. And they're wondering, well, if I believe God, if I trust God, why would this happen to me? And so I don't know if you've heard it, but sometimes people feel like, well, maybe something is wrong with me, or maybe I'm cursed, or maybe something is not, maybe I need to do something else. Why did this happen to me? Uh, have, you, have you ever been there? You believe God, and sometimes because of the situations that happen, uh, you, you are left befuddled and even confused. 
There are people that get angry. They just totally walk away from God because they feel like God was the reason or the cause. Or they ask, why did God allow this to happen to me? Sometimes you believe in God for a job or house, maybe a husband, a wife, whatever it might be. And, and you go through difficulty in, 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 in different aspects or different ways in your life, trying to get what you feel like God is wanting you to, to have or to do what you feel God is wanting you to do. And yet you're com combating such difficulty in the process. Sometimes we ask ourselves, we, we wonder, well, what, why did this happen? Is it, is it really that God want me to have this or not? Uh, you have people that uh, uh, battle sickness and they battle disease and they, they fight. And, 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 you know, you can only uh, uh, not only feel with these people but stand with these people. They fight. They go through difficulty. And they wonder, uh, is God really going to do this for me? I remember that uh, uh, I did this for 19 years, fighting and battling with my wife and coming home, going to meetings, having healing services and seeing people get healed. And yet when I came home, I, I was, I was, I was uh, face to face with this thing that stared me in the face of the impending death of my wife and what the doctors were saying. And it was working outside. So what happens what happened at home? What what's going on? What is what is really taking place? And this this sometimes causes causes people to have such difficulty when it comes to faith. And they wonder, well if I if I have faith I shouldn't be going through all of this. Or if I have faith, this should not be happening to me. Or if I have faith, why is this stuff taking so long? Or why is all these, what we quote-unquote call bad things happening? <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? Uh, I remember in the early 80s, they used, to, they used to teach, and they used to say that if you're a Christian and you have faith, then you should not go through any what they call wilderness experience. You, you shouldn't have a wilderness experience. And so a lot of these things sometimes plague the body of Christ. They plague believers. And they, they wonder, well, does God really care about me? Does, does God really see what I'm going through, what I'm dealing with? And if he does, why doesn't he do something about it? Y'all ever been there? Y'all ever heard people talk like that? Have you, have you ever heard that maybe you are one tonight that, that have these kind of a struggles. What do we do? What do we do? What do you do in difficult situations, time situations where you don't have any answers and you don't know what to do? What do you do? What do you do? Look, I want you to go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, I'm, I'm going to title this tonight. Uh, I'm going to title this, What Do You Do When God Says No? Okay? Uh, but it's not, it's not just a, 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 a no. Uh, sometimes God takes too long. Sometimes God doesn't come when you think he ought to come. Uh, you ask Brother Abram that. Brother Abram would tell you God doesn't seem to answer when, when he ought to because it took him 25 years to bring about his promise in my life. If you ask Joseph, Joseph was what? 17 when God gave him this great dream. And Joseph went through hell the rest of his life until he was about 30 or 33. Joseph went through hardships and difficulties. And it didn't seem like God was going to answer. It didn't seem like God cared or that God was going to stand by his word. You ask God's like that and now we're going to ask Paul. Because if you see in chapter, chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians 12, Paul said, he said of, the, of verse 24, I'm going to read chapter 12 of 2 Corinthians, all right? But I'm going to go back one chapter to chapter 11 of 2 Corinthians, and I just want to read what, what Paul's testimony is. Verse 23, he says, he, Paul says, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. As one beside himself, I am more in labors, he says, more often in stripes above measure. In prisons more frequent, in death 
He said often. And now let's look at let's look at what Paul has to say about what he went through. Paul said, of the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, save one. All right? So that five times he was beaten 39 times. All right? Uh, thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I was suffered, I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day have I been in the deep. Look at it. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city. <laughs> this, dude, this, is, this, is, this is enough for us, to, for us to just check out, right? In perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. And then he says, in weariness and in painfulness or in travail. He said, in watchings often, in hunger and in thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness. Beside those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily, the cares or the anxiety of all the churches. So look at what Paul went through. Look at the stuff that he had to encounter and he had to deal with. And, and, you know, anybody that's dealing with these things can easily say, well, where is God in all this? Why, why do I have to go through this? And why is it that God just doesn't seemingly like just rescues me all at once? Okay? And so I, I know there's a lot. And, and I know that people that are listening to us, there's a whole lot of people that are battling uh, uh, situations like these. You you hear him say many times, if God is so loving, then why is it that all these kids have cancer? If God is so this, then why is all this happening? And why is all of that happening? But I want to I want to zero in specifically on when when things take time for us or things doesn't come to us as fast as we as fast as we think they ought to. Or we ask God for certain things and God may even say no. I know some people don't, don't think that God ever says no. I'm going to show you here where God says no, and I'm going to show you a couple of other places. Look at this. If in our, our 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse, uh, verse 1, it is said, It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations, what? Of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body, I, I cannot tell, or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such a one was caught up in the third heavens. So now, you and I are what we call in the first heavens, right? The first heavens is the atmosphere, right? That, that's, where, that's where we live. This is, this is the first heaven. The second heavens above that is what you call a space, an outer space, a, a, up in that area. That, that is the region where the Bible says where the principalities and powers live, okay? Or the domain of evil or the devil. And then you get to the third heavens, which is the throne room of God, okay? And so Paul said he was caught up into that place, and, and, and undoubtedly it was so real to him, Paul could not tell whether he was in his body or out of his body. He says, verse 3, I knew such a man. He said, whether in the body or out of the body, I can't tell. God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise. And then he says, and he heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. So he heard things that no doubt he could not utter here, but he also heard things that probably there were no way to articulate, articulate them here on the earth. He said, he said, verse uh, verse five, he said, of such one will I glory, yet not, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. That word infirmities means weaknesses. Okay? He said, For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And then he says, and lest I should be exalted. All right? So he's continuing, and he's answering. 
and, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation. You see that? He said, lest I should be exalted or get a big head or become full of pride over the uh, revelations that God has given me. He said, there was given unto me a thorn in the flesh. What is that thorn, Paul? This thorn is not sickness or disease. Okay? He said, the thorn is a messenger of Satan to buffet me or to beat me or to cause difficulty in my life. All right? And he says, lest I should be exalted above measure. So the, the messenger of Satan came and buffeted him or caused so much of the stuff that we just read in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He says, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice. So he asked God. You could see that Paul was adamantly asking God to get this off of him, to stop this, that it might depart from me. And, and God said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. So in other words, the request that Paul was asking for, God simply said no. God simply said no. I'm not going to give it to you the way you are wanting. Okay? God simply said no. He said, God said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness, all right? Now, I thought about this, and I thought, of, as I thought about it, there, there are certain promises in the Word of God, like when it comes to sickness and disease, that, that, that God promises to heal us. He promises to do these things for us. There are also certain things that are not written necessarily in the book. For instance, uh, should, I leave, um, should I leave Washington and go to Melbourne. Now that's, that's not written in the Bible, right? There, there's, there's no clear cut of the will of God about that in the scripture. So when you and I pray, that now is, uh, is all dependent upon what God wants for your life when it comes to this particular thing, all right? Whether, whether God wants you to stay there, whether he wants you to go. So God may tell you, no, I don't want you to go to Melbourne. I want you to go somewhere else, okay? And sometimes in all of our lives, there are certain things that we want and we desire. And sometimes we will even cry out to God for these things. And these things, though they may be good, may not necessarily be good for you. Are you following me? Though they may be good, they may not necessarily be good for us. And especially when we're asking for it. So we've got to understand that God is our Father. And He ultimately knows what's best and what's good for us, right? Are you with me? Amen. All right. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to read the same scripture. I'm going to read verse 7 out of the Message Bible, okay? I'm going to read verse 7 of the, of the Message Bible. Uh, let's see. Uh, Okay, it said, because of the extravagance of those revelations, and so I wouldn't get a big hit, I was given the gift of a handicap to keep me in constant touch with my limitations. Satan's angel did his best to get me down. This has no, this has no reference to this man suffering with sickness or disease or like some people said, pussing, everything coming out of his eyes. This has no reference to that. He said, uh, uh, Satan angels did his best to get me down. What he, what he in fact did was push me to my knees. No, no, no danger then of walking around high and mighty. At first, I didn't think of it as a gift and begged God to remove it. Three times I did that. And then he told me, my grace is enough. It's all you need. My strength comes into its own in your weakness. Once I heard that, I was glad to let it happen. I quit focusing on the handicap and began appreciating the gift. You see that? I quit focusing 
on that and began to appreciate the gift. It, it was a case of Christ's strength moving in on my weaknesses. Now I take, I take limitations in stride. And with good cheer, these limitations that cut me down to size, abuse, listen to this, accidents, oppositions, bad breaks. I just let Christ take over. And so the weaker I get, the stronger I become. All right? Now, I've got to work this to flush this out so all of us hopefully can gain a good understanding of what we are saying and what we are trying to teach. Because we're people that, are, that encounter great hardships and difficulties in our lives. And sometimes in reading the Bible and standing on the Word of God, sometimes because we don't understand God or don't understand sometimes uh, um, uh, God from, from different perspectives, then what we, what, we, what we sometimes do is try to pigeonhole God that this is a, 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 the only way that God could do it and God could move for me. And so sometimes we miss the other uh, wonderful blessings that God want to do for us in a whole uh, a different perspective, all right? Uh, this statement is important, uh, as I said earlier, because we have spent so much time talking about faith and how to receive what God has provided for us. And, and first let me say that faith is not designed, remember this, faith is not designed to fight God or to make God do anything on the contrary. It is the assurance of the believer that God will perform his word or his promise in our lives. However, there are times in our lives where God is silent. Or he, he says no in a situation that you seemingly desire to have. Or even says, or he even says to you to wait. Or God may be walking you down a situation and God doesn't necessarily say anything to you. And you are befuddled why this is happening. Do you remember the, uh, the three Hebrew boys, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? And I want you to see that God did not stop the king from throwing them in the fiery furnace. See, he, he did not keep them from going in the fiery furnace. But what he did is he preserved them in it. He preserved them in it, and he preserved them through it. All right? So there are times like that in our lives. There are times, that these times frustrates many of us because we don't understand God or, and or the per perspectives are not, or, or, or our perspectives are not with eternity in mind. And so these are some of the things that we have to understand and we have to be willing to look at and to keep before us if we're going to walk this walk of faith, okay? If we're going to walk this walk of faith, we're going to have to, we're going to, have to do this. Now look at Acts with me, Acts 16. Acts chapter 16. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, and look at verse 6. Acts chapter 16 and verse 6. Uh, Chuck says, I thought, I thought the thorn in his flesh was poor eyesight. No, sir. No, sir. It, it's, it's, it's not poor eyesight. Uh, the, thorn, the thorn in the flesh, the Bible specifically says uh, that the thorn in the flesh was a messenger of Satan that was given to buffet me, and then he talks about the difficulties that he had that actually humbled him, okay? Kept him humbled. In other words, God kept him, gave him something to, God allowed something in his life to keep him grounded so that what the end, what, what God was doing in his life will not allow him to be exalted above measure, all right? And so sometimes people say these things, but but you can you can look at it and you can see there's no reference there of any sickness or disease or that he couldn't see or that his eyesight was poor. Okay, uh, chapter sixteen of of, of uh, First Corinthians, I mean Acts chapter sixteen and verse six. It says, "Now when they had gone through Phrygia 
and, and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Now notice this, he's preaching. So he's doing something very good, right? Would you agree with that? Amen. He's doing something good. And he's doing something that God anointed him and called him and empowered him to do. But watch this. And after they were come to Mysia, they assayed or they made uh, they made the they they made uh, the 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 uh, action or they they acted to go to Bithynia. Bithynia. Uh, they they made uh, whatever necessary moves to go into this region and preach the gospel. And it says here, but the spirit suffered them not. The Spirit of God stopped them. No, I don't want you there. You see that? I don't want you to go there. That, the, the leading of the Holy Spirit. And they passing by mission came down to Troas. And in a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying, Come over into Macedonia and, and help us. So all I wanted to do is show you that there are times in our lives where the Spirit of God and God will say no to us. There's times in our lives where, 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 where even though Paul was doing what God anointed him to do, God had somewhere specific for him to be and specific for him to do. And so, and so where Paul intended to go is it's no different. I've seen people over the years where uh, they prayed for a husband and they asked God for a husband, and, and, and this guy came into their lives, and uh, they start telling us, and we counsel them, and we counsel them according to the word. And we show them where it doesn't matter <laughs> what you're feeling. This is not good for you. You don't need to go there. And they, oh, but, but, but I really feel like the Lord said to do this, and the Lord said to do this. You see, sometimes our desires and even our feelings can fool us, right? Yes. And so, and so they, they, they were like, no, no, I really believe that this is what we need to do. They began to what? They began to not observe certain things in the Word of God. And as a result, some of them suffered greatly because they, they refused just because you like it and you want it doesn't mean that God is okay with it. Are you following me? Amen. And so, and so you, you could see here where even though Paul, this was Paul's plan, God told him, no, this, this, this is not how I want you to go. This is, this is not where I want you to go. Uh, there's a song, there's a song, and, and we did this Sunday, but there's a song that Lauryn Hill Harris, uh, his, the lyrics uh, there's a song that he sings, I should say, from his album, I've Just Seen Jesus. And the song says, in the desert of my days, there came no cooling rain and a burning sun stalked me without mercy. And I cried out at the time, I must be paying for some crime. And in my loneliness, it seems nobody heard me. Now, how many of us <laughs> have been through difficulties and stuff going on in our lives? And because, it, because of the longevity or because the thing lasted for a while, you have done everything that you know to do and you start wondering, you must be, it must be your fault why this is happening. You must be paying for something that you did. How many? How many? Yeah. You ever been there? Pe people all over, the, all over our world think like that. They all think like that. You see? And, 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 and the, the lyrics goes on and say, and the, and then he came to me in a cool and gentle breeze. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me, let me back up. He said, in the desert of my days there came no cooling rain, and a burning sun stalked me without mercy. That's right. And I cried out of the time, I must be paying for some crime. And in my loneliness it seems nobody heard me. And then he said, and the days were weeks, and the weeks were months, and the months seemed years. So I've, I've had apples out of that bag. I've, I've had things that I've trusted God and God has put in my heart and I've moved and I've believed and, 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 and days pass and months pass and weeks pass and that thing hadn't arrived yet. Amen. All right. I've had other things that they, they have arrived, but I've had things that have not arrived. All right. And he says, and the days were weeks and the weeks were months and the months were years. I want to encourage people here. 
and, and in the and, and then it says, and in the dust and the sand, a thirsty man battles, praying that that help would appear. I, I can remember in my own mind of times where I was in my office crying, as David said, my meat was my tears day and night, crying out to God, God, why, why doesn't this change? And it seems like. God didn't hear me. It seemed like nothing changed. <laughs> I've, Lord, I've had apples out of them bag. Then, then, then another part of, of the lyrics is saying, In the desert of my years, you see, what first was days, now is the desert of my years. And you know, when there's a desert, you lack for water, right? So figuratively speaking, the, 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 the difficulties that we encounter as we're walking with God. He said, in the desert of my years, they felt no rain, only tears. As I struggled on with hope alone to cling to. He said, the rugged hills all look the same across the endless dry terrain. To the silent skies I cried, my God, where is you? <laughs> where are you, man? Where are you? Especially when you're going through a trial. And the trial just seems like, is there any end to this? Is it ever going to be over? And you cry out to God, and he doesn't seem like he says anything. I'm still talking about faith now. And the Lord says, I want you to talk about this side of it to the people. He said, uh, he says here, um, and then he came to me in a cool and gentle breeze and in a healing rain I heard him say, I love you. I've been here, my child, every weary mile. Oh, there must have been times when it seems like I've forgotten you. And I led you through the barren desert too, to the land of milk and honey. That is now before you. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? Did you know that a, a caterpillar, a caterpillar uh, wraps himself in a web. It's called a cocoon, right? And I won't even read some of the stuff that goes on inside of that cocoon. And aspects of the caterpillar that is dissolved in the cocoon for that caterpillar to become a butterfly. And, and it is said, it is said that the cocoon is essential for a caterpillar to become a butterfly. And that process, if that process is disturbed, if the process of that caterpillar is disturbed in that, in that cocoon, then there is a risk of botching the transformation of the caterpillar. So now what I want you to understand, I'm going to give you a couple of points here, and I want you to understand as, as you and I walk this journey with God. Because don't let, it, don't, don't let people fool you. It's not all a pie in the sky. All right? It's, 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 it's not all just, ah, you know, just goose bump and goose. But that, it, it's not all that. Because, oh, come on, look at your natural life. Your natural life was not all that, right? Yeah. And, and so it's no different. But, but I think that if you and I can develop certain perspectives, these perspectives can help us in life. Because you see what Paul said is Paul said, I sought the Lord thrice. I, I begged them three times to, to get me out of this uneasy and difficult situation. And he said, God said, my grace is sufficient for you. And then Paul said, most gladly, therefore, I'm going to rejoice in my sufferings. I'm going to rejoice in my necessity. Well, what happened to Paul is that his perspective changed. Uh, and, and, you know, people tell you this just in natural life. They will tell you that you need to have a different perspective in life. And if you always see everything as, uh, uh, how can I put it? If you always see everything that, that it is impossible, you cannot, and, and, and there's no way out, then, of course, that leads you and I to a place of hopelessness and helplessness, right? 
And so in, in, in academia and in Fortune 500 companies and in business, they always encourage people. And now, uh, better than any other time in history, uh, uh, businesses empower workers to think creatively, to think innovatively. What, what do you mean by that? What I mean is that they are warning you to look at the same problem the company has been having. But look at it from a different perspective. Look at it with new eyes and fresh eyes. So, so where we once thought that there was no way out of this situation and that this situation is so bad for us, a person that can think critically, a person that can think innovatively, can look at the same problem that you call a demise and see with that same problem that that problem can be an opportunity to put the business on the map like it's never been before. You see that? Because they're able to think differently and they're able to see things differently. And so one of the things that you find out about faith is faith in God is not simply having Trust in something that you're not acquainted with. Does that make sense? Yes. It's, it's not about having uh, a faith in something that you're not acquainted with that you don't know. <clears throat> faith in God is not mechanical. It's, 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 it's not you trusting an inanimate object. God is a living being. He never changes, but he's a living person. And so faith in God is it requires you and I to know him. That's what that's what faith in God means is that I come progressively uh, progressively in my walk with God, I come into a, a an intimate knowledge and understanding of the person of Christ and who he is. You follow me? See? See th that makes that makes a whole lot of difference, okay? Because if I don't know the thing or I don't know the person, I can come up with all crazy ideas about the person because I don't really know them. I don't know their character. I don't understand them. Am I making sense? Yeah. But, but when, you, when you start becoming intimately acquainted with an individual, then people can tell you all sorts of things about that person. And you can stand up and say, no, that's not that person. Now, how can you say that? How can you be so sure? Because I know them. You see? I've known them. I've seen them in difficulty, and I've seen them when things are going bad. I know their character. I know the individual, and I know that doesn't sound like, like them. And so, and so it, it is the same thing with God. God doesn't call you and I to, to a, uh, uh, how would I say? He doesn't call us to, to a, a, a far away relationship where you know of him, but you don't really know him. You understand? God doesn't call you and I to simply read the Bible without having intimate experience with him. Because the Bible will be a closed book if the Holy Spirit doesn't open it. And so when we go to our Bibles, it's not going to just any book. We're, we're coming to the Word of God, and by the Holy Spirit, He takes the Word, and He makes it real to your heart and mind. It is, it is intimacy and fellowship with our Father. Are you following me? And since God is not here what we call physically, he's here with us by his spirit, and his spirit makes the word real and alive, and he brings us into an intimate experience with God to where the word does not become archaic. The word of God doesn't become something that is locked away in a museum that belongs three and four thousand years ago. But the Holy Spirit makes it something that is real and active with you today. And all of a sudden what you begin to experience and see is that the God of the Bible becomes the God of the now. 
You see, the God of the Bible becomes real to you. Though you don't see him, faith in him means you know by experience that he's real. Because you also are intimately experiencing him and acquainted with him. Does, am I making sense? Yes. All right. Okay, I hope I'm making sense to those of you out there. So, so listen to this. One of the things that all of us must understand is that you and I are living in a fallen world. No matter how well and how close you and I walk with God, that will never bring you to a place where you are exempt from the struggles of life. Are you following me? I, I wish I could sit here and tell you, the more you know God, you won't have any problems. But that's actually contrary. The more you know him, it seems like the more troubles you have. All right? Now, can anybody just kind of tell me why you think that is? Just, just, just because go along with it. Because who doesn't yeah, want anyway. us to have any happiness, any, any faith. And so the more we grow closer to God, uh -huh. the more he's going to latch on and try to prevent us uh, the okay. what I call blocks in our path. Okay, and who is he? The devil. Sufa. 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 Okay. Okay. You said something. Huh? What did I you say? The devil. The devil. Yeah. Okay. Because you see, think about this. As long as you don't know God, then you are no threat to the powers of darkness. Yeah. As long as you don't know God, you follow me. As long as you don't know God, you are no threat to the enemy. You see, see, Satan doesn't see things sometimes like we do. All right? Uh, he doesn't take vacations. You follow me? He, do, he doesn't take vacation. He's always working to get a heads up in your life, yes. get a foot up in your life. And so the Bible says that you and I ought to be sober. See, we ought to have our wits about us. That we are to be, at, we are not supposed to be as people that are inebriated, whereby they are they don't have their wits about them. You are to be sober, meaning not under the influence, right? That means you have your wits about you. You are able to see clearly and to make your to make the right decisions. So you have to understand. That just because we are walking with God is not going to exempt you from a life that that has struggles, pain, or disappointments. Man. All right? That's not going, not in this life. Are you listening to me? When you and I get to heaven, then we will rest from all our labors. There is no such thing there. But in this life, the more you know God, the more you understand the word, it seems like hell comes against you greater because you are a greater threat now to him. You're a greater threat to the powers of darkness. You're a greater threat to the works that he's doing and how he's inflicting and hurting people. You now become an agent of heaven that can not only stop that, but can thwart Satan's plans. You follow me? And since Satan sees that, uh, 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 Satan sees you then as an adversary, and what he does now, he will use any and everything he can in order to disrupt your life, disrupt your faith, and to keep you from where God wants you to be. Are you following me? He's going to do that. And so one of the things that are essential, therefore, is that you understand that this life is not your destination. Are you following me? Now, we may, not, we may not like it. I don't know any of us that like it. I wouldn't like it when my son got shot. I didn't like it. If he had passed, I didn't want that to happen. But, but listen to me. Listen to me. And I'm not saying this because I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not touched by people who lose their children or their love. I'm not saying this because of that. But, but, but listen to me here. Regardless to, to what happens, this life is not our destination. Arlene doesn't know when I'm leaving. I don't know when she's leaving, when her time is up. Now, I pray that our time is up together. 
You see what I'm saying? Because God knows I'd be a basket case. Y'all follow me? God knows I'd be a basket case. They have to bring a they have to bring a stretch and put me in and tie me up. I, my tongue be hanging out and I'll be drooling and just, you know, I I just God knows I you know, you know, y'all y'all have to pray for me. Y'all have to pray for me. I know you have to. But but hopefully we'll leave together. But you see, it may come where that doesn't happen. Or your child passes or whatever. And what God wants us to do is not that we have to throw a party over that because he knows we're human and we hurt. But we have to have a different perspective. And we have to understand that no matter how many times God heals me, if I live long enough and Jesus tarry, I will see him via the grave. Is that right? Yeah. Now you and I don't like the grave. But we know that sooner or later, we will have to leave here. And so it is, it, is, it is essential that you understand that this life is not your destination. This is, this is not it for us. And so if God blesses you and you got three house, five house, eight house, whatever it is God give you, amen. I'm with you. You see, whatever God gives you, glory to God, but wear it loosely. Wear it loosely because this is not your destination. Whatever power God gives you, whatever influence God, use it for his kingdom. Use it for the goodness of God. Use it to accomplish the things of God because sooner or later, you're not going to have it. Sooner or later, you're going to go via the grave, amen, or Jesus is going to come and get you. Are you listening to me? So so the Bible says, uh, 1 Corinthians first. Timothy 6, that God gives us all things richly to enjoy. And so God wants us to enjoy all of this, but this life is not it. This life is not our destination. Uh, uh, Abraham says, we are pilgrims here, and we are passing through. Abraham said in his day that he looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. Are you listening? Now I'm not I'm not I'm not think, I'm not teaching here that you know some people say you you you're so heavenly minded that you know earthly good. I re I really think that's different. Now I know why, where they're driving to, but if you're really heavenly minded, you would do earth a whole lot of good. Okay? But what they're driving to is that your mind is so much uh in the clouds, we won't even say heaven. In the clouds somewhere. And 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 and, and you know, you just you just buzzing up there if you get what I'm saying. You, you're not making any sense. There's no cohesiveness to what you're saying and what you're doing. No, no, no. I think on the contrary, God wants you and I to understand heaven. And understand now now listen to me. Since watch me now, stay with me. Since this is not my destination. And since heaven is my destination, then I need to be sober with what I'm doing. I need to live my life here soberly. I, leave, I need to live my life here purposefully. I don't need to waste my time. I don't need to waste what God has given me. Are you following me? I don't need to waste these things. Because if this is not my destination and heaven is my destination, seeing the face of God is my destination, that what I do here is not only important, but is essential that I ensure that God Almighty is leading, directing, and, 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 and channeling my life or leading my life in the direction that I need to go in. All right? We need to understand that. All right? Number two. Let's see here. Where am I? I think I lost my place here. Okay. Number two, we need to, we need to gain a heavenly perspective. Uh, another way of saying it is you and I need to have an eternal perspective. See, because if you don't have an eternal perspective, sometimes when you're dealing with difficulties... You, you, you can't see the reason or the purpose of it. You, 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 because, 
Because a lot of times what we're looking at is right now and we're looking at, at our, our comfort. And, and whether what I'm dealing with uh, really benefits me or not. And, and I want these things off of me and I want them away from me because uh, I don't see any reason and any purpose for them in my life. But guess what? Uh, tell your neighbor, you don't have to. God does. You see what I'm saying? You, you and I have to understand that according to Romans chapter 8, that the Bible said that God has created you and I to be conformed to the image of his son. Amen. All right? And so in God walking with you and I, he's also making us. Making us to resemble from the inside out the very image and the person of his his son. So if you don't, if you don't, if you don't understand that this life is not it for you, and if you don't understand that you're simply passing through, if you don't understand that you need to have a, a different perspective of life, that many things that happen in your life will not only hit you in your gut, but it'll keep you down. See? It'll keep you down. Uh, like I said, I've, I've, you, you probably can sit here and say the same thing. Cried many times, many nights. Many times thought, there's no way out of this. There's no way I can get out of it. I'm calling on God. He doesn't seem to answer or come and just get me up out of what I'm what is hurting me? He doesn't seem to just move this stuff out of the way. And what, what it seems like God does is he leads me to walk through the process and he walks it along with me. He doesn't take me away from it, but he keeps me in the process. And to my amazement, he brings me out on the other side and what I thought was going to kill me actually becomes a blessing to me. Amen. You see? And so faith in God... Faith in God not only experiences the, the, the good time and not only experience the blessing of God healing you immediately and working out this job for you immediately and turning that wayward son for you immediately and doing all these things immediately. But what if the thing is a long protracted period of time? Where is your faith then? You see? Where, where, where is our faith when the stuff don't seem like it's turning out the way we're supposed to. Are we, are we still fueled up to talk to God? Do, do we still run and talk to him or do we stay away from him? Do we, do we get angry with him and just kind of turn him off? I don't want to talk to you anymore because I've been talking to you and it seemed like you don't care about me. See, see, it, I'm not saying that people, we don't feel that way. But when we respond that way, when we respond that way, then it, 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 it actually shows where we are as far as our development or our growth in them. Yes, sir? Oh, no, I'm agreeing with you. Oh, okay. Okay, I thought you, were, thought you, were, you needed something to say. You see, it, it, it only shows that. It only shows that. It, only, it, 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 it shows where your God doesn't get mad. He, he, you're his child. He knows. But, but it shows where your growth level are with him. So if, if I just gave you faith and just told you, and the, the Lord said, I want you to talk about it. Because if we just talk about faith from the standpoint of, voila, God did it for me. A voila, God did it for me. A voila, God. And he does do that immediately, immediately, immediately. But what about when things don't happen when we thought they ought to? What about when things don't come around for us when we thought they should? What about when the job doesn't work out and we were convinced that God said this is the job and it doesn't turn around? The girl walks up, turn away and walks away from you and you gave her your heart and you were convinced that's the girl and now you are left broken and wounded. What about these times? <laughs> uh, Marilyn said we have to learn from my experiences just like a baby learning to walk will fall but the baby doesn't stay down they get up and do it again until they get it right well you see that's where faith comes in 
See, faith has to take you beyond just the act of God. Oh, man, this is good. Faith has to take you beyond just the act of God to the character and the nature of who God is. Amen. You follow me? Faith takes you to the to very essence of who the person of God is. That's why we get to know him. So that when the act is not there, it doesn't detour our confidence in him. Our confidence in whom who we know him to be. Now, I can have the confidence that I have because of my experience. Mm -hmm. See, my walk with him. You see, and when nobody was around and I was left for dead, you see that? And and the powers of hell seemed like they threw a party. We got them now. Okay? And I'm crying out to God. Can't see in front of my face. Don't know my right from my left. I don't know where anything is going to come from. And the folks that seemingly were who, were who I thought would be there for me were not there. Some, <laughs> I've come to understand also that sometimes people that you think that should be there, that's not there. Don't get so mad sometimes when folks are not there for you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes it's a blessing in disguise. Are you listening to me? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. 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 I don't know if this makes any sense to you. I hope it does. It's making a whole lot of sense to me. We all have to grow up in God. You see, we all have to go, and we, we can't always judge things just by uh, uh, God actions or or whether God, not, not necessarily God actions, but whether God did this for me when I asked him. You see, because faith believed you receive the promise of God when you ask. But many a times, it is after your prayer to the manifestation that we seem to have a whole lot of hiccups. All right? I uh, hold your place there. I want you to look at uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Hallelujah. I hope I'm making sense to you that are out there on, on, uh, on Facebook. Uh, those of you who are listening to me, look, if you have any questions, just put it up on the screen, okay? And, and I'll make sure that we entertain those questions, okay? But I, I wanted to, I wanted to kind of lay the groundwork here, uh, uh, because we we need to we need to understand we need to understand. Uh, I, I've had apples out that bag, yeah, uh, yeah uh, 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 previously in my life, and 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 I could go back to the times I was growing and developing. And sometimes you get you get mad at God. <laughs> you just you just get flustered at him. You get flustered at, at, at the things that are happening and you wonder why and all of these things. Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse, verse uh, 36. No, I'm sorry. Verse 34 it says, For you had compassion on me in my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. It's a verse 35. It said, Cast not away therefore your confidence which have great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience. See, now the only reason it says patience, because it doesn't come when we think it ought to. It doesn't materialize overnight. It doesn't <coughs> instantly happen. But you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, that you might what? Receive his promises. Then he said, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no what? No pleasure in him. You see that? It didn't say he wouldn't be saved, right? God said, he's not giving me any pleasure when he pulls back from me simply because of the difficulty or the problem. Flip over to Hebrews chapter 11. Well, I want to show you Hebrews chapter. Now, 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 now Hebrews chapter 11 opens up 
about without faith is impossible to please God. And then it takes you through a litany of the people who, who, who walked with God, worked with God, stood for God, and how God ultimately came to their deliverance, right? Mm -hmm. But I want to show you those who didn't experience that in this life. Uh, 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 Lorraine says sometimes God pulls people away to allow us to deepen, to deepen on him, to depend, I'm sorry, deepen. <laughs> She's probably laughing. To depend on him and no one else. Exactly. I'm going to show you a scripture next week where God, the Bible said, God hides himself. See, see, because, see, what, what, what you and I have to understand is that there are certain things that, that are, are of greater priority to God than just making you happy. God will make you happy. Don't get me wrong, okay? But, but, but we all are adults in here. And there comes a time in your life where life is not just about making you happy. Sometimes you have to make decisions that doesn't necessarily make you happy, but it's good for you. And the only reason why you do that, because you have come to a place of maturity in your life. Amen. Is that right? Yes. There, there, there are people that just still want to just live happy. They are grown adults, but they just want to live sucking on uh, candy, right? And you see the not only the pattern, but the problems in their lives, right? Because, because when you become an adult, it's not just in age, it's in maturity and how you think, how you see things, right? Because you have to make you have to make very good decisions that's going to ultimately be a productive and blessing in your own life, right? And so it's the same thing with God. God is not just all the time wanting to put a piece of candy in your mouth. Because God has to bring you to a point where you're mature and where you can take a hit. And not give up. You can fall seven times and get back up. Are you following me? God wants you to be developed to where you can you can take Satan's best. And still, when it's all said and done, and it seems like the chips are against you, you can say, though I'm slain, yet will I trust him. I know my Redeemer liveth. Yes. Amen. Yes. See? It, it takes faith in God to do that. Mm -hmm. Uh uh. Uh, uh, look at this here. It says in, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24, it says, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be what? Called the, Notice that. This is, this is faith still now. He refused to be called Pharaoh's son. You see, do, do, you, do you realize that in our culture today and our, in our world today, if you stand for what it's right, and you, you stand for what is, especially if you're visible, you may suffer consequences? Yes. Do you realize that? Do you, th that is still faith. Yes. Are you listening to me? That is still choosing God's way. Amen. Are you listening to me? It says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. season. All right. Uh, esteeming. Look at that. Esteeming the what? The reproach of Christ of greater riches than the treasures and what? In Egypt, Moses had a different perspective, a different outlook on life. Moses said, I rather the reproaches of Christ and I count them, I, I, I count that greater than the treasures that Egypt can give me. Why? Because the treasures are fleeting. Amen. The things in this life are fleeting. All right? For he had rec uh, respect of, I don't want to, I'm going through it because I don't want to stay there. Else you and I can camp out there for, for two years, right? Uh, 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 for, for he had re respect unto the recompense uh, of the reward. God, I'm out of time. Let me just read this right quick. Jump down to verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the... Do you see what all faith did for them? Mm -hmm. Out of weakness were made strong. They waxed valiant in fight. You see, faith just didn't... Faith just didn't uh, uh, 
uh, keep them from any problems or any pressure, but faith gave them the upper hand in the struggle, gave them the strength to go through the struggle. Faith gave them the power to have the victory through the struggle. Faith kept them from losing their mind. Faith kept them anchored in God when everything else around them was, was, was turning against them. You see this, right? You see, faith does more than just keep you from having the difficulty or delivering you from the difficulty. Sometimes it walks you to the difficulty. It takes you through the problem. It takes you through the hardship. And in the process, you get to meet a God that you ne have never known before or a side of God that you have never known before. Look at this here. Women receive their dead to, to life again. Now watch this. It says others were what? Others were what? Tortured. Others were what? Tortured. All right. Don't you ever forget that. It says others were tortured. I didn't say you're going to be tortured, but I'm trying to show you here. Others were tortured, not accepting what? Deliverance. That they might obtain what? A better what? Resurrection. Now watch this here. It used to get me, but the Holy Spirit just dropped something in my mind. Why were others tortured, not accepting deliverance? What, what does he mean? That doesn't make any sense. Right? Come on, come on. Are y'all with me? It doesn't make any sense. Well, how could others be tortured not accepting? It doesn't make any sense. If I can have deliverance, why am I tortured? Do you follow me? If I can have deliverance, then why get tortured? What, do I just like to be tortured? No. The Holy Spirit just dropped something in my, in my mind. He said, others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. Because to accept deliverance would mean many of them, they had to recant. They had to give up their faith in Christ. They had to back away from their belief. So they were tortured. They would not accept this kind of deliverance. And so they were tortured. Why? Because they wanted to obtain what? A better what? Resurrection. So you see, their perspectives were different. And others had trial, what just now, of cruel mocking and scourging, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. Now, I don't know, I know sometimes we as Christians don't like these things, but Matthew chapter 10 says the servant is not greater than the master. Are you listening to me? If they call the master of the house Beelzebub, they'll do the same for the servant. Verse 37, it says, they were stoned. Huh? They were sawn asunder. They were tempted. They were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goldskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented or ill-treated. Now watch what God says. Of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves. Now you say... But why could they do that? Because they knew that this life was not their destination. Their perspectives were different. I don't know what you and I would be called upon to suffer on the behalf of Christ. I don't know what we would have to stand for on the behalf of Jesus Christ. You can already see in our culture there are certain things that people, oh my God, that is politically incorrect. And if you say anything, the backlash that you can get. But I want you to understand from the heart of God that walking with God does not always mean that everything is going to be a roses. It does not mean that everything that you encounter is going to be peaches and cream. And everything that comes against you doesn't mean that you, you sinned or you did something wrong. Why it happened. Are you listening to me? We must understand that we are in spiritual warfare and the forces of hell is against us. And my friend, if you know God and you are walking with God, then you are a threat to the enemy. And there's nothing the enemy wants to do but knock you out of the way. Are you listening to me? And these people here, you hear me? These people chose differently. Some of them were cut in half. Why were they cut in half? 
because they would not recant. They would not give up their faith and their trust in Christ. Now, how can you do that? Because of the power of the Holy Spirit, but because your God, their God was real to them. They knew God was real to them, and they were willing to give up their lives because there was a better one awaiting them. My friend, this life is not it. Are you listening to me? <clears throat> this life is not, I, look, I'm out of time. I know I need to continue, but I'm just out of time. But I want to close in saying this to you. I can't remember his name now. I can't remember, but uh, Polycarp, you look him up in history. Polycarp, 80-something years old, an old man. Are you listening to me? This man had received Jesus and was walking with God, and they, they got a hold of Polycarp. And they said, Polycarp, we want you to recant and we want you to curse Christ and turn away from Christ. And, 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 and the writing said that Polycarp looked at the, at the emperor and he looked at the, at, at, at the, 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 the what, what would I say? Uh, he looked at the consequences of him not doing what they said. And he looked at them and he said to them, he said, 80 something years have I walked with God. He said, and Jesus have never done anything wrong to me. He said, and should I now turn around and curse him? And you know the story. If you don't know the story, go read the story. They said, history said that Polycarp would not give up his faith in God. And they took Polycarp and they tied him on a cross. And while, while they tied him, they lit the fire under Polycarp and began to burn him. And while he was burning, he began to sing. How do you like them apples? I said, how do you like, when you read the life of the apostle, when you read the life of early Christians, when you read the life of Christians from AD 1 all the way to 300 and something, you will read that though they went through these difficult situations and, and they went through great persecution, what fueled their fire? What caused these people to stand so <laughs> firm for God? They knew him. Are you listening to me? The Jesus was not something they talked about or they weren't to church and heard about, but they knew him personally. I remember one young man that they tortured, and they tortured him so much that the young man said, Yes, yes, I recant, I recant. And, 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 and he gave up. He said, I recant. I, I cursed this Jesus. I recant. And, and, you know, the audience was looking. And while the audience was looking, there was this 18-year-old girl that was so taken in her heart. She jumped out of the crowd when he, oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost, I need to quit. She jumped out of the crowd when he began to recant. And she said, you fool, why would you do that? And she said, I stand for Jesus. And they took her and they put her in the place of this guy and they killed her. But you know what I'm saying to you? Well, all I'm trying to say to you in everything that I've said is that there are more to life than just now. This life is not our destination. Are you listening to me? What you are walking with God for, and you and I walking with God, is not just for the here and now. There are greater things for us ahead. And all I'm saying to you, my friend, is that your faith and my faith doesn't just keep us when everything is fine. It just doesn't keep us when it seems like God answered your five prayers. It keeps us when it seems like God is not answering anything. Nothing is turning out for us. Nothing is working for us. Why? Because you know the man that you gave your heart to. You know the person that you committed your life to. You know the God that have answered you in the past. You know that he's not a figment of your mind, nor a figment of your imagination. He's not wrapped up in the house, the car, the man, or the girl. He's far beyond yes. what you and I can ask and think. And he's real to us. Yes. We know this God. And that Holy Spirit in us will give us the courage in the midst of sickness, in the midst of disease. You say, well, what if you got a disease and you die? If I die, I am ultimately in his arms. I am ultimately in his hands. Are you listening to me? That's why when they walked Paul to get his head cut off, what did Paul say? I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course and I have kept faith. What do you do? When God says no, what do you do? All right? 
Someone says, uh, Hebrews 11, verse 26 mentioned Christ regarding Moses. This is an aside. This is aside. So perhaps best answered offline. But help me understand how Moses esteemed Christ's riches before his advent. Is it because, uh, because the Jews... Uh, let me see. Hold on a minute, folks. Hold on a minute. Okay, is it because the Jews awaited the coming of Messiah? Well, you see, when, when Hebrews write it, Hebrews is not taking just one aspect of Moses. It, Hebrews is taking Moses' life in general. Okay, now remember, before Moses ever went to deliver them, Moses met God. Right? <laughs> Moses met God. Uh, 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 in Charleston Heston uh, portrayal of, of, of Moses... Uh, Moses' wife told the 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 uh, Moses' wife told the uh, the uh, Egyptian girl that was in love with Moses. Uh, told his wife, "You lost Moses when he went searching for God. I lost him when he found him." <laughs> okay, so so when God met Moses, everything changed in the life of Moses. See, so when Hebrews is, is accounting here, Moses walked with God. Moses experienced God. It, it, it doesn't tell you what all Moses saw, but come on now. God will take Moses, and he said he talked with Moses face to face. So, so could you imagine being in the presence of God? Could, could you imagine God coming out and talking to you? Could, Oh, glory to God. Could you imagine the experience like Paul? So now what Moses is saying is compared to the things that he have experienced with his God, he said the reproaches of Egypt meant nothing to him. He said he gladly accepted what Pharaoh and all of them said against him in order to experience and to keep the relationship the love and all that not only God is, but that God has promised them. You see, and it's the same thing with you and I. The promises of God in this Bible or the things that speaks to you, it, it leaves the, the, the place of it being just a promise. It is God talking to you. It's God talking to me. You see, and so when, when you embark on doing and walking with God and doing what God gives you, no matter how large or how small. Honey, it's not always going to be peaches and cream. And sometimes the things that happens to you, you may feel like you miss God. See? But man, if the devil can stop you, he will stop you. And those boys, he couldn't stop them. Amen? That's why it is said if the Holy Spirit was withdrawn from our church, 90% of what the church does would go on. <laughs> but in the old church, if the Holy Spirit was withdrawn, 90% of what the church did would would stop. Of, well, of course it would. Uh, uh, I don't have time. I'm done. But, but you know, I mean, I, I don't, I, I, uh, uh, I fail to, to find the word sometimes to, to try to articulate uh, what my heart is saying. Uh, because, uh, the early church was not perfect. They made mistakes. They were flawed. Uh, they understood that. They understood the grace of God. But if there's one thing the early church had is they knew their God. They knew God. They served God. The reason they did what they did was because God was not just a book. He was a person. And they walked with him. That makes a lot of of difference. Amen? And I have to close that. I'm sorry. I gotta go. I gotta go. But I will be back next week. Alright? And we will continue this topic. So if you know anybody that needs to hear this, get them online. And I, I, I believe that we're going to talk about something that's going to help people to understand. Because people, Christians sometimes got this warp idea that all they're here for is to be happy. God don't have you here just to be happy. 
God has you, has you here to accomplish a certain purpose and destiny in your life. And, and yes, you, you'll be happy in the process, but sometimes you may not feel happy. All right? I love you, man. I, I really do. And, and we, we here, we are believing for God's best for you and for your family. Amen. Father, I pray for the people tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you'll minister life to them, that you'll bring encouragement to their hearts and their spirits. And especially in this time, Lord, <clears throat> where in some areas and some circles, it just seemed like it's all a game. It, 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 it just seemed like we're going business as usual with church. And, and God is not at the forefront of our hearts and our minds. And, and we don't understand God. God... God, in Jesus' name, minister your life to these people. Strengthen, encourage them, bless them. I pray in the name of Jesus. And those who are undergoing difficult trial, Lord, I've spoken unto them tonight, Lord. I pray that the anointing of God will minister to them in their situation. And, Lord, that you'll not only bring them out, Jesus Christ. Lord, I bless you. I bless you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want you to go in peace. And you be blessed. Would you do that? Be blessed tonight in the name of the Lord. And we'll see you on next Thursday at the same time. God bless you. We love you in the Lord Jesus. God bless you. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Oh, what do we always say? Remember what? The power of the seed is not in the size, but in the content. You thought I forgot, didn't you? I know y'all thought I forgot, but I did. Bye-bye. <laughs>